Okay. <coughs> oh, namaste. Welcome everyone to Satsang this morning. Thank you for coming. A uh, number of new faces also, so um, quite a mix. I was hoping today, unplanned of course, that we are going to have the most uh, like advanced satsang today. We will see how it comes, depending on who comes up. Um, I may at some point ask for a shallow cushion just for my back, yeah, to try this one, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Please, you come. Thank you, Babaji. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to be here with you. Ah. Um, there's been uh, uh, a line of inquiry, which at a certain point is seen to be no longer relevant, but that uh, at one level of consciousness has been per, uh, serving a fairly clear function. And I, would, I wanted to bring it to you. Uh -huh. Just to see if you could bring some more light to it. Okay. And uh, it's uh, can the perceiver be perceived? Okay. And looking in this way, sometimes it's immediately clear. Okay. Now before we go, if I just take a moment uh, and you, you hold your point, so that others who may not understand the root of this question can join in. Is fair enough? Yes. You know because. This is one of the most important questions that has been put for those who are who are making use of self inquiry and self inquiry was uh, and is a, a kind of method we can say a method or an exercise practice that really is very very sharp at exposing what is unreal in us hmm? uh, so um, this is this was a question that I put some while ago, and it is still burning away like a meteorite falling to the earth for many people. And what I mean by this is that we have to, if we can accept this premise, no? that whatever constitute your life so far. Is either is something that in your mind you have either you have experienced in your body mind, or that you believe, or that you have perceived in some way, and you have accepted or you have rejected whatever it, whatever it is, that is on this side of the eyes, the the, the the earth, the world. Let's say the world of names and forms of people and things, the sense of time also. And change whatever it is that you can perceive or conceive, and on the inside, behind the eyes, in the realm of feelings and thought, memory, desire, all these things, you see, all of them, something is perceiving them. Would would you, would you would you understand that? It's an obvious thing, you know. It happens also for a child. They may not be able to put it in the language I'm putting. But everything you are perceiving, you must be there first. You must be there first before the perceiving of the world or the sense of otherness is perceived. The sense of I must first be present. We are with me on this. It is a very basic thing. But although it's basic, probably many people have never really thought about it. So here we think about these things. Because in seeing them cleanly, even simple things, in seeing things clearly, uh, we find that a lot of misconceptions fall away. And this is one of them. We are looking at the, mo the most important thing. All that you conceive or you perceive no, must be from the perspective of the one who is experiencing all these things. Fair enough? You can speak about someone else's experience. You can say, you know, this person told me, yes, but it is not your experience directly, but you might absorb those impressions and feel that is true enough for me. So that joins your family on your content of what you believe is your world. Fair enough? Okay. So everything is like it's funneling back. 
towards some point, which is the I point. I. I see, I think, I believe, I do, I know, I go, I stay, I meditate, I sleep, I wake up, I live, I die. It's fair enough or not? Okay? Now we come to what is this I? Because it's up on and towards this I that everything else is relevant to this I, the sense that the sense I. So I'm calling this I in this context the one who perceive. The perceiver. Okay? What can the perceive what makes the perceiver perceive? Well, the perceiver perceives through the senses and the mind. Okay? So what is heard, what is smelt, what is tasted, what is seen, what is felt, these are the senses that brings in the infant this the sense objects can be many. The eyes are two, but what they can see are billions. The ear is two, they come to one point, but what they can hear is many, 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 many things. The mouth is one, but it speaks many, many, many things, good and bad. The body is one, but it can feel so many things. Where do all these things come to? They come, the mind interprets them as sensations, and then something records them as experience. The eye is behind them. The eye is even capable of watching the mind itself. Have I gone too far or too fast? So behind it all is the feeling of I, the eye itself. Then we must come then, if the eye is the perceiver of all things, including even the idea of God even, the feeling of I. If the eye is removed, nothing is perceived. Can the eye be removed? The eye who perceives also. Hmm? Well, that eye, what about in deep sleep? Is anything being perceived in deep sleep now? So all that the sense of eye used to perceive in the waking state, because most of our act of perceiving is occurring in our waking state, the phenomenal waking state. That's the functioning of this I particularly. It sees everything, people and place and things and time and and the sense of future, sense of past, sense of present. Everything is perceived to this I. But in deep sleep, we are not speaking, the senses are not operating also. The body is there to be touched, the eyes are there but they cannot see. The ears are here, but no hearing is happening. Hmm? The mouth is there but not speaking, maybe whatever. It's it's not, nothing's there, and the eye who perceive is the eye who perceive there. Well, it seems not. But what would perceive the absence of this cognitive eye? I'm sorry if I leave some of you behind here. I'm going to not turn back for a moment. What is perceiving the cognitive eye? Meaning the eye that is perceiving ordinarily. The high who creates a history, and the memory which holds the information of history, is not functioning. Is there something beyond even this I, hmm, that perceives the presence and the absence of I? Now I see how many people still left on the swinging bridge. Okay, thank you. Okay, so my point now is that we are speaking now in deep sleep. I'm not speaking about dream, because in dream you can be going across the Sahara Desert, you know, on the back of a camel. Okay, but in deep sleep, a dead sleep, where there's no cognitive functioning, no diverse perceiving. Okay? Is there something there? Is there any form of consciousness there? Do you enjoy sleep? Do you enjoy deep sleep? Not talking about dreaming, actually. I don't know how many people enjoy go to bed looking forward to dreaming. <laughs> so here we don't ask people, tell people when they go to bed, sweet dreams. Enough dreaming, actually. Dead sleep. Mean that when you wake up in the morning, you're refreshed, you're ready for today. Okay? Dead sleep. 
Is there an enjoyer of that sleep? Maybe you don't know. Do you only have to study your sheets to sing, Oh yes, looks like it was a good night. So, I would say that there is consciousness even in the deep sleep. If you refer to yourself as the cognitive consciousness, meaning the one who is always seeing something, but in deep sleep you are not seeing anything at all, so you say, Well, you know, I was not. The one, the, the shopper for experience, the one who is, you know, Experiencing in the daytime is not present in deep sleep. Is there nothing there in deep sleep? Can there be a break in your reality? Is there a break in what you are? Or is it just that we are entering different phase, a different you know, a states that rotate? Are you there in deep sleep or not? So let's let's push it a little bit. I'm going to stretch a little bit. Let's say that something enjoys deep sleep. So it means that it is aware, even there's no debate and there's nobody talking to this one, but there's an awareness of the absence and the presence of the functioning I. Is that stretching too far? No. Okay, I'll come back and say why. That I, which is up and about, that is present now, even, who is able to understand and to feel and to think and to know and to remember and to project, this sense of I is present now. In deep sleep, it is not present there. Okay? Is there awareness of this absence of the functioning of this personal I? Is there awareness of that in deep sleep? Or is it just total blank? And no one to recognize blank. Or blank is only assumed. Is blank also experienced or perceived? Okay, I'm not gonna push you too much. Okay, let's, it's not necessary for the moment. Let's say, as far as we know, okay, that the one who is perceiving everything, you know, is here somehow. Whatever it is, whatever it is. But all the senses, the mind, the sense of time and past and present is reporting to some conscious field. We are together with this one? Okay. That centralized consciousness, which is the sense of the knower <coughs> or the experiencer or the perceiver, that which is there, can that itself be perceived? This is his question. I gave him this question and a few of you to contemplate. Mm. Can the perceiver, that ultimate perceiver, established somewhere in this body somehow, can this one be perceived? Meaning what? Can it be seen? Can it be touched? Can it be tasted? Mm. Can it be identified? Is it an object? Is it tangible? Does it have a form? Does it have beginning? Does it have ending? Does it have quality? Hmm? Is this too mental for you? No. So now you speak. So there's times when. Uh Engaging this in inquiry, mm -hmm. it's clear the formless recognition comes, and it's clear that this formlessness is. The formless recognition comes to who? Slow down now, because we are burning up words very quickly. The formless recognition happens or occurs to who or to what? And the recognition of what? The formless recognition is about the thing recognized or the one who recognizes? When you say the formless 
the formless recognition comes. To whom does it come? To the formless recognizer or the thing recognized? Or both? Can the form recognize the formless? So establish who in, or what is recognizing what. It's recognizing itself. How? What happens if it recognizes itself? Don't speculate. Speak from your experience. What happens if or when it recognizes itself? First, we must get to the point no? hmm? that, again, the question can the perceiver, can the seer, can the knower know itself, perceive itself, or see itself? Or can it be recognized? No, that would take one step earlier. Can it be recognized? That which sees everything. And remember, there are some sensations which are so subtle, there are no names for them. They are not registered in the book of man. They have no name, and yet they are perceived. Certain waves are so subtle that there are no names for them. Yet they are also perceived. By what are they perceived? Hmm? And who? why is this question, can the perceiver be perceived? Why? Because to find out if the perceiver itself is an object. You follow? Is it meaningful for you, this yes. kind of question? Or should we talk about something else? The only reason why I came here is to solve this experientially. I only come here, in the first place to the last place, for freedom. I don't really have any other connection with you, except love. So it's time. Somebody has reached this point, this maturity of looking. And we are not finding out something about out there. The answer here is out there. No, it has to be here. You must be the answer. No? It must come from you. You being what? Is the perceiver material or immaterial? Is it tangible or intangible? Is it form or formless? Does it exist? Yes. As what does it exist? You see, certain questions are being asked here that are not asked anywhere on the planet, actually, to be honest with you. Not with this intensity and this requirement that you must be where the answer is arising from, because you must there be, you must be there before even the answer come. You must be there to recognize even an answer, actually. As what are you here? Who are you? We want to learn about everything else. What is that? What is this? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? But who am I? What is the I arising here? 
And if the I itself is arising here, what watches its arising even? Is that one arising? Is it male or female? What religion does it come from? What is its practice? And can the answer survive? Can the answer to these questions survive by itself? Who is pleased or displeased with any answer? In the past, anybody could come to Mantisaja. But who could stay here? Who could stay with me here? Until the one who stays vanish. And who will witness this vanishing? Papaji said that words to me also. If you must wake up, if you would find the truth, you must disappear. What kind of instruction is that? To give to a poor little student <laughs> how to disappear. Woof, abracadabra, how you will disappear? What kind of sadhana is that? It was not given, the instruction was not given to a person. It was uttered and the person could not survive it. Can we stay at this level? Should we drop down a little bit so we can bring in everybody or what? Hmm? Who survives this inquiry? As I said before, the one who starts this inquiry will not finish the inquiry, but will be finished by the inquiry. Does that bring fear? Does that bring fear? Does it, does it excite you <laughs> divinely? <laughs> huh? Are we waiting for that moment, the vanishing cue? Because only pure intelligence can appreciate this thing. That knows what it means vanishing. The vanishing of what? Of that which is not real. Which is taken to be real. And we can live in the so called reality of this personhood sense, which is a limitation. It is also consciousness. The person is also a form of consciousness. And perhaps because of that, it perpetuates. Because underneath it is consciousness. And it is conscious, but it is very restricted, very limited, selfish also, prone to fear, insecurity, desire, attachments, projections, dreaming. Behind this person is largely the undiscovered potential of the human being to awaken to our true state. Our true nature, um, as imperishable consciousness. What does it mean? Does it mean because I want to say this because some people feel that it, yes, it may be higher, but is it as satisfying? 
Is it as, as adventurous as personhood? When you are in your truer state, do you regret your former state? No. The more we lose of what the more we lose of ourselves, the more we become ourselves. Does anybody get that one? The more we lose of the idea we have of who we are, the more we are awakening to the fullness of what we are. Is it spiritual fantasy? Because you people who are here, you know, you should be the testifier of the truth. When I say, "Blessed is the one whose life, whose presence is the evidence of truth, not just whose words, words are easy, but whose life, do you realize that each one, you know, is emitting some energy field? Either a kind of noisiness, or even if you don't speak, if you have come to a deep place of awakening within you, that itself is communicating and corresponding with other intelligent or sensitive beings on the planet. Do you realize this, or does this sound like something you find in a book? We smell very often like person. Like a psychic smell of a person. When we have indulged too much ideas about personhood, we are too much in the field of complaining and projecting and desiring and attachment and fear and insecurity and, and comparing and competing rather than loving and sharing supporting, uplifting, meditating, resting in your own self. Different fragrance. One is a perfume, the other one is an odour. You discern which. And what is satsang? To be in the environment where the perfume itself is such an under, where the perfume is love and peace and joy and wisdom and purity. Are these outside of you? So all of this that I am speaking, is sprouting out of this question also. Hmm? Because once we recognise experientially the truth of ourselves, you are not, uh, you're not into the perfume business, you are not in the <laughs> wisdom business, you are not in the faith business, you are not in religious business, You are the Self, in harmony with the God field. The question, the question, can the perceiver be perceived? Don't try it if it doesn't appeal to you. If it appeals to you, then grace will assist your introspection. And it is very direct. What we are sharing now, uh, for me, it is a very simple thing. So therefore, it's a joy to try and impart or to guide uh, this type of uh, meeting. If I felt it was just a hardship, then I don't want to give you hardship. Why should I want to give hardship? The hardship comes from the mind in the first place, not from the heart. The heart is not struggling with what I'm speaking, by the way. But the mind, the person, that which is uh, thinking what it might lose, or you know, thinking of other things like that. 
But largely, for many of you, that state is tranquilized very much. Now and again, you know, it flares up something. Okay? And you see the difference. Something feels disturbed, and attention can go there. Your powers of discerning, your establishment in yourself, should be able to put out this fire by yourself. It's true or not? Yeah. But if you need some help, be swift about it and cut it quickly. You should not be going into a second day of mourning and third day of complaining. No, you should cut it. It does not deserve such loyalty of our attention to be trying to get rid of oh, some stuff that's in my mind and stuff like this. Hmm? I perceive you much higher than that. Can the perceiver be perceived? And if so, by what? Another perceiver? A deeper perceiver? Okay. First of all, I just want to say that this, these are the questions, the type of questions that can come up in an advanced session of satsang. It's not generally. Hmm? Generally, we talk about uh, lots of different things, but for me, it's the same thing. We can talk about lots of things, look at lots of things, but with the same eye, from the same place of truth. And what does that mean? It brings truth to them. It sees them in the highest way. It's not that we are sitting there all day, can the pursue be pursued. Actually, in those for, for whom that happened, they tend to go off by themselves anyway. They don't need any company. Okay? Not everyone is going to be like that. And uh, for some, we are at different stages in spiritual maturity, meaning the sense of being separated or separate from the goal of pure being is still alive to some extent. We still feel that we are separated, and we are on a journey towards something. And it is quite a natural experience or feeling for a while, because we are still carrying the virus of personhood. And it will feel like that. You will feel not fully established. In fact, uh, when you have recognised the Self, you will still not feel fully established. You don't make any claim about anything. Just some questions begin to dry up. You are not so focused on your own well-being personally. Your life is more about the well-being of all beings, including this being also. Okay, I'm going to stop and let you breathe a little bit. Okay. But we can go further. If you have something to say now, talk a lot now. What you say? The original question, mm-hmm. which at at this point it. When it's been used in the inquiry, it's been to come to this point. So I don't know if there's a value to to speak it, just to have some light brought on it, or if you feel that this is sufficient as it is. Because where where you've brought us to is um... well, there there is there is a there's a kind of finality about it. Why ask the question if the answer cannot be received? And is is this kind of question uh, satisfied with an answer? Maybe it is satisfied by um, uh, a revelation more than an answer. Because if it's an answer, maybe it's the mind that gets the answer. And we have bypassed the mind a bit too earlier. Yes. No. So what remained then? What is able to perceive the functioning of mind, and even perceive the one who suffers mind? Am I moving too fast? 
Is there something that's aware of both the mind play and the one even who suffers it? Or is that too intimate to include as the thing seen? Your time here with me is for this. To solve or dissolve this mystery. But the, the mind aspect of personhood is in a resistance to this discovery also. Because as I say, there is there is there are two energies or forces working inside. I'm keeping it very simple now. An energy that works to perpetuate personhood in ourselves, meaning to to encourage and to continue the life of being a person with the usual worries and the aspirations and worried about the children and what are we going to do and this this type of way and worried about the world and this type of thing. And there's another side to it, which is about the elevation of consciousness, rising in awareness, becoming more clear, more united, more unified in the field of consciousness. Unbroken happiness and peace. When I say unbroken happiness and peace, I'm talking about a universal peace, which can have shadows of sorrow arising in it, but is not overwhelmed by sorrow. You understand this or not? I'm not saying that you're so peace, there's no space for anything. No, it's not rigid. That in the infiniteness of ourself, everything can have its momentary play, but nothing sticks. Like if I draw a face in space, put some hair on it, it nothing sticks. And yet at the same time, it's not that it does not care. This is the mystery, you see, that from it all love come, and joy and peace. All our creativity. The mind is an instrument, it's not the source of creativity. It's only because it poses as though it is the creative source, and then we are attached to it. But the creative source is the self. What remains is what? In the final analysis, the final seeing, what remains here? Is it object? Is it a form or is it formless? Is it other than you? Is it personal or impersonal? That is to be experienced and verified. There is no further afterthought about it. It has resolved itself. It is not an enemy to the world. It is not in conflict with activity. It is the root and the womb of the manifest world. It does not go on researching, researching questions and questions about itself. It cannot be seen with eyes, the eyes in your head. And yet it is perceived. But it's not a dualistic perceiving. We can speak more about it after now, if there it comes. But, uh, who is somebody here? Come, come back. Yes. Hello. Hi, um, When I'm alone with myself and I'm at home, 
I can watch myself, uh, watch my person very good. I'm coming good into this, and I also it it, it came up also the question: Is the receiver receivable? And it was feeling, and <laughs> I felt very good in it. But I, when, uh, for example, when my children are coming to home. Mm -hmm. When I have some actions outside, <coughs> all is gone. <laughs> so all, all that training with my mind, or then I'm really now the person, I'm the mom of my children, and I, I think not one little moment to, or I, I don't remember myself, mm. be the watcher. Yeah, we all hear this or not? Yes. Uh, <coughs> okay, A very important point, no? Very important point, no? At what stage can you stay being neutral, hmm, uninvolved? Because there are things actually, before they came into your life, there was no attachment. Okay? And then they came in and they became attachment, and now they became unavoidable. Uh, they, some things, no? Is it necessarily so? Is it a forever thing? Or is it that somehow that is also transcendable? And is there the will to transcend, uh, not the love, but the attachment? Yes, yes, yes. Not the love, but the attachment. Yeah. Is there the will to transcend? And is it perceived that to transcend it is an unloving thing to do? And also, um, is there even an urge even to do that? Is there a sense that, wait a second, life could be actually much more broad? Does it necessarily that by living we become more tight and more attached, unavoidably? Or, do, or does it go more that way? Or does it go this way? These are things, you know, we don't have to spend too much time over them, but they do pass through, no? We have some really good friends, no? Good friends in our contemplative field. Some good things come to contemplate a little bit. Ah, ah, oh, no, and mm, we have some good things that come to help us. This is one of them, and it's a very strong one. This thing, which is a good thing, that you know, when you're by yourself, you say, "I can observe myself." Can the receiver be received? And this type of thing, can the perceiver be received? And there's something. There's a joy. There's attachment. There's space in that. But as soon as like, the family come, then the mother role whoo, and mother role just covers the universe, basically. I mean, like universal consciousness, where are you? Because mom is here, you know what I mean? So stuff like, you know? And that's it. But I mean, we laugh. Is it a funny thing, really? Because we, we suffer this also. Or do we feel, OK, good, now I've got things to do, blah, 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 blah. And does it matter? Does it matter? Does it matter if uh, we leave our attachments in place, and we just don't uh, trouble about that, and we just do the best we can in between? Or is is it good that we look, because not just children, touch on all kinds of things, ideas and concepts and beliefs, and some are so they are so seemingly tailored to our life that we don't even think that they are worth looking at. And do we have to go around scratching to find what what attachments there are? Life brings them up, actually. Life is your secretary; it brings them in right on time. So how it work then? Because we feel, uh, or do you feel that largely through your satsang, some of these get addressed anyway without actually going there with you know, with your you know medical kit. That actually some things there's more space happening inside. Do some people experience this? That somehow the the attachments are less and less. They are it functions in a different way. That I'm still able to function. I'm still parenting, but you know I'm not kind of, you know. The role does not replace the consciousness. Even the role happens in the consciousness. 
because I feel it's a very, very, um, uh, a very open and very fair statement you make. That you know, as a mum, you know, or as a dad also, that as soon as you know, like I'm fine, I'm Mr. Universe, you know, until my kids show up. Then I'm dad. Da, 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 we have to get into a role or something like that. Or has it changed since you have been deepening in your satsang? Is there some no-go areas that we can speak about? You know, consciousness and uh, super consciousness and Brahman and Parabrahman. But when it comes to mom or when it comes to dad, it's like mm, don't go there. That's kind of like. Untouchable area or something, and let's spread the openness. Not just mom and dad, career, attachments, whatever it is. No? Don't they is the is don't they themselves also appear inside the broader in the immeasurable consciousness field? Again, doesn't the role say in your case, like say when the kids come and. Somehow the mother role comes up. Is that not observable? I forgot about it. And when, when I'm later alone with myself again, and then I'm asking myself why, why I can't do it, why I can't watch myself when I'm mother or when I'm acting with other people. Yeah. It's, it's totally off, it's totally away. Also you know what I'm it is? Uh, it's carrying now that it's not that you're watching yourself necessarily. But you are being yourself. It's as though the consciousness has a certain vibrational field, and you are that field. It's not necessarily you're on duty watching. You know, it's not watching in that way. But it's as though something is vaccinated from getting too attached to anything. It's like the 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 consciousness vibration is always present at some point. It's always present. It's as though that is your strongest perception. Is is your your the consciousness field, the vibration field, if you want to say. And because that is, it is it is sitting in the lap of the of the immeasurable one. Can I speak at that that is that it's just uh, it's just uh, it's just what is you you your what has changed from since you started satsang? Is your person still the same person, or is it uh, just uh, some kind of shadow inside a deeper field that is almost indescribable, of of a, kind of a sort of joy and peace? You know, I've not really checked in with you guys enough. What I, what I can feel is with my mind's. I get more quiet since I'm using the yeah. the, the watcher, and yeah. now it's starting coming up the question: um, Can the watcher be watched? Mm. I'm, I'm getting more calmful. That, yeah. That's that's right, and yeah. and also with my children, I'm not. Yes. I, I don't have the the strong frights yeah. so much anymore. You see, I have children. it that your mothering becomes even better. Yes. Whatever your function, if it's not dummy, if if Ego is not the prime minister in your country. Your country being, this is your land, okay? Uh, if it's not the one that's governing, then all your roles get better. Mm. Everything you're doing, because it's not just to please the person with all the person's idiosyncrasies and and the strangenesses and so on. It's it's functioning for the. The joy of consciousness. So it 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 it's much more intelligent than an ego mother or an ego father, isn't it? It it doesn't oversweeten things. It doesn't spoil children. It it it's 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 a wise mothering, but it doesn't limit itself to to mothering. It's it's a universal uh, quality. It's there's a universality about you. That means that you are equally yourself in all situations you apply, and you are effective. Am I wrong in saying this? No. Do we not find that our interactions with beings, even even ones who are not in satsang, it's 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 at a higher vibration? Do you always feel like you have to step down and step lower or something? 
Don't you feel that you can be with people without requiring of them that they should be like you? But you can be there and you can still get the best out of what's possible for the moment. Yes. Not because you know you're recruiting, you're not recruiting, but somehow you're you're coming from a higher place within yourself. It's worth talking about this because sometimes people go out and they talk with the local people and try to maybe say things which are not appropriate. But are you really present, you know? Whereas one time you'll go, yeah, and wow, and do this type of thing, you say, really, do you really think like that? Uh, not all the time. Oh, okay. Because I find that when these kind of thoughts come, if I go with them, I just go into a much darker place, don't you? You know, you're helping. You're not just ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. Your your existence is elevating the field of consciousness around you. You cannot help it. You know, you're not just wanting to be one of the team. You are your own galaxy, in a sense. You can't help it. You, you, you will come from truth. You're not just always trying to make things look all nice and don't rock the boat. But you, you, you speak from your truth. You have a respect. That is true self-respect. You can speak with beings, and you know if they're if you 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 also have the greater capacity to evaluate whether this conversation is going anywhere or not. And 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 do we not honor that in ourselves? So this thing. And though it may be like this for a while, it is changing. As you say, that you are more calm with them, that is a big thing. Yeah. If mother is more calm and more calm, the children will be more calm also. They may not say, Oh, mom, you will be more calm. You know? But they just function in that field. You are making a better environment for them. No? Yes. And gradually you can think that what I say, your, your, your calmness means you are still being true to here. Yeah. So for the moment there there is a tran- there is a transitioning, but it's gradual it's in its own time. You know, that is. I think it's good. Okay, thank you. Because I I thought I need to use it every time the receiver, but uh, now it was yeah, your not forceful. Was yeah, yes, very uh, important for me. I was speaking with someone yesterday, <laughs> and yeah. uh, this person has come recently. And spend some time. It was also following uh, reading books on self inquiry and, and this type of thing. He came to Mantasaja just for a short time and poof, something exploded inside. And uh, now, uh, some, some like uh, going back with all this enthusiasm and oh, things have to change with my family and said, No, 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 don't, yeah. don't. It's going to change with you. And, and and don't go and uh, start to be too strong with them, just you, because I made that mistake already <laughs> on your behalf. Okay, <laughs> so I'm um, really it doesn't work like that, and and just slow down a little bit and just you know yeah you just more change and don't speak about what you can say. Listen, this thing is happening with me, and you know I'm like that, and you know you may you may find me being a little bit like this, but really I'm cool, and you know as much as you can. Rather than try to change the world and put your flag and say, "Hey, you know, the second coming and all this type of stuff," <laughs> so there is something in 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 that that I feel be gentle and you know, and the more you relax with this, you'll find that it's coming in much more nicely, mm. you know. And what a beautiful thing! A great offering to your family. Mm. Rather than they must change, you change, and then whoa, they integrate in their in your field. Mm. It's beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Good, good. Good satsang today? Yes. <laughs> From now we are going to have to um, be looking with this intensity. At some point in your sadhana, in your in your looking, we can reach a certain stage where it feels good, you know. 
Remember I spoke about this in India, that, um, you know, I was talking with Rohini and we were talking about this thing, that in the beginning, when, when you are on the journey in the beginning and the ego is, uh, is snapping at your heels, uh, uh, everything, uh, uh, you know, it's like, you know, or it's feeling you are not clear as to where you're tru- you truly are. And you have to fight, you have to use your discernment. You have to pray and fight and use your discernment. And it's hot, things are burning. <clears throat> but at a certain point, we reach a certain stage or level of maturity, and we can start, start to plateau off. Things start to feel good. Huh? You have good spiritual friends, you know, you think of something and it happens and like that, you know. You you know, you have your favorite chanting and bhajan and things like this, you know. You you sit for meditation, you can sit for an hour, oh, it's good, spiritual life is good. But you are falling asleep. The fire doesn't feel strong. You start to wear all the all the paraphernalia of spirituality. You're in your Vishnu phase. <laughs> but we're here for Shiva. What Shiva mean? To burn what is not true. Don't build your house outside the gates of Nirvana. What does it mean? We should get all worried. <laughs> no, 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 no. A deeper resolve, deepening in your stillness. You see. Not just concentrated on yourself personally. No, 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 no. Inwardly and outwardly, there is an evenness. What you have grasped deeply. Hmm? Your presence and being is radiating also spiritual influence. Your understanding is not dry. It's alive. You don't talk so much. Sometimes we talk a lot to try and convince people of your spirituality. But I speak also of a tongueless realization that even if you could not speak, it would ooze through your pores. It's our time, it's our chance. Don't miss it. Thank you. song came through on the first day we arrived back on the land and uh, it's a song to uh, revere the light in you and the light that you point to in us
open here like this to um, from the Ribu Gita uh, a few words that may be deeply uh, joyous to hear I am indeed of the nature of the imperishable mass of knowledge I am indeed of the nature devoid of creation or destruction I am indeed of the nature that is the imperishable bliss. I am indeed of the nature that has not an atom of egoity. I am indeed of the nature of the defectless supreme Brahman. I am indeed of the nature of the divisionless supreme Shiva. I am of the nature of the undivided absolute which has nothing low about it. Be rid of the doubts, imagination and notions with such uninterrupted conviction. I am ever of such conviction or bhava alone about the One Absolute in your heart. And being rid of all traces of uh, vikalpa, that's doubts, imagination, and notions of the mind and bondage, and immersed, undifferentiated in the ocean of the Brahman bliss, enjoying the ineffable bliss, and thus cutting asunder the endless bondage of mundane misery, be ever established as the undivided existence. Very beautiful. Thank you, everyone.